This document I hold in my hand is your golden ticket to flying a drone near an airport. It's called an instrument, it's issued by CASA, comes with conditions and I'll show you how to get one of these. Welcome back. For those of you new to this channel, my name is Aaron Rajmani. I am the director of UA Visuals, a commercial drone services provider based in Melbourne. We offer drone services for creative, commercial applications across Australia and beyond. This video, I want to explain how the application process works in obtaining an instrument, what you need, how long it takes, and how much it costs. Now, there isn't many resources out there at the moment on things like this for new drone operators and business owners, so I figured someone's got to start, so hopefully this video will help. Please consider subscribing. There will be plenty more tutorials coming up, and also don't forget to check out our online drone courses, DMA, where we help you get skilled up in the drone industry. Details below. All right, there are six steps to this operation, which I'll cover in more detail. And I also will show how we managed to get this approval to fly within three nautical miles of a controlled airspace for two years. Number one, the brief for the client's request, what they are asking and how a drone survey and photos was the answer for them. Number two, preparation and research. So before the application, why we needed to put forward an application to CASA. Number three, CASA application and the five documents needed and also the timings involved. Number four, CASA estimate letter. So the $800 fee that they charge you with. Number five, obtaining an instrument and what it means. And number six, issuing a NOTAM. How to fill it out, submit and also check. Now, one thing to know before we get stuck into it, every application is gonna be different. What I'm about to explain was our process for this operation conducted in 2018 and its specific conditions. It will be different to yours and will probably change over time. Now the other thing is I can't reveal too much of the actual operation because we are under NDA, but hopefully this will give you enough information on the broader overall process. So this is a CASA issued instrument which basically is your approval to fly or operate your drone in relation to specific conditions which might be outside your normal approved conditions. So for example, uh, you might get one of these if you wanna fly above 400 feet or at night, or in this case, within three nautical miles of a controlled airspace. All right, so this is a big video. So grab yourself a coffee, strap yourself in. <laughs> Let's get started. First one, the brief. Okay, so this particular job is a construction progress of a large facility in Melbourne's north. It's a huge build that's going on for just over two years now. Now the client, which is a video production company, has been engaged in the promotional video of this progress. Now these guys have subcontracted us to help with the drone work as it's highly specialized and requires a REOC license to get permits through and so on. So you would not be able to carry out something like this if you are wanting to fly under the sub two kilo category, nor if you have just a REPL. Now, if you have just a REPL, a remote pilot license, I would suggest you engage in a company that has a REOC or a remote operator certificate which will be able to help you through the application process. So the scope for us is to take photos at various points around the site and provide a drone survey and photogrammetry of the construction area. So similar to that of near maps and Google Earth and satellite view, that's the kind of output that we're after. Now this would be a monthly visit and the deliverables are panorama images at their specific location points, uh, the high res 2D map and the 3D author mosaic imagery from the drone surveys. Now the challenge is that we will be operating in a no-fly zone, so within three nautical miles of a controlled airspace which means any aircraft entering in or taking off from this area needs to adhere to the CASA and Air Services Australia rules and regs, simply put. No matter what drone you use, if it's over 100 grams, such as a Mavic Mini or a Mavic 2, if you take off and hover above the ground, CASA and the control tower needs to know about this or you will be in breach. Now, annoying as it is, this is aviation law. I'll drop some links below for the CASA website. Have a read, knock yourself out. All right, so we were apparently the only drone company to obtain an instrument for two years to fly here. And I think it was due to the fact that we were quite lucky with the parameters of this location and the operation. So the biggest factor in getting this over the line in our application was because we had separation or shielding. We were flying under the height 
of the nearby high voltage power lines, which means this offered a huge risk mitigation to the safety assessment. Manned aircrafts would not fly below these structures, nor would they want to, hence protecting each other or shielding from the manned and unmanned aircraft. So long as that operation was below the maximum height of these power lines, we were good to go. The maximum height of these 500 kV power lines were about 60 meters, so we applied for a 50 meter maximum height altitude and our operation was approved. Preparation and research. Before going through the full process, you should check the airspace and identify if you can perform your operation here without submitting a full application. It's important to first conduct an airspace check because you may actually be able to operate there outside of tower hours. So a few years back, when we first started off, we were putting in so much admin time on an application only to work out we could have actually flown there outside of the tower being open or when the airspace goes from controlled to non-controlled. Now most smaller regional aerodromes operate like this, so check that out first. In terms of resources, you can get information like this in the URSA or apps like Oz Runway, there's OK to Fly, just to name a few. Now as our operation was near Essendon Airport, which is always controlled, we had to submit an application, which leads me to the next topic. CASA application. Right, this next part is the hardest and it takes a lot of planning and preparation. You need to get all your documents together, get all your ducks in a row before you submit the application. Now remember this process isn't for everyone as it will vary and not all your jobs will get approved either. So just keep that in mind. All right, so the documents needed for the application are the following. The first one, you need a REPL and REOC certificate. This is usually held by the drone company. If you have a REPL, they probably won't accept this. They will need to see a company or an individual with a REOC certificate. Number two is an AROC. So this is an aeronautical radio license. This is basically so you understand how to listen and to dial in on your airband radio so you can hear the chatter of the control tower and the manned aircrafts in the air. Number three, you need a flight authorization form. This is issued by CASA and within this form you need to state a whole bunch of things such as the purpose of the operation, what permit you're asking for, the operational area, operational periods, um, your procedure, what drone you're using, the map of the area including the takeoff and landing zones, emergency landing areas, uh, there's the maximum height altitude you need to document in there, uh, your crew and what they are doing, there's hazards, etc. The list goes on. So it's quite a lot in that particular document. So number four is the landowner permission. So this can be in a form of an email. It's basically just saying that the landowner has granted permission for you to fly a drone above his property. And then finally, number five is the risk management plan. So this is the CASA risk matrix template. Okay, so it's definitely time consuming and plenty of paperwork to do. So make sure you allow enough time and manage your client's expectations. We always say around 40 to 60 days just to be on the safe side and we also take a deposit from them just in case. All right, so once you have this, you're gonna package it up in an email and you're gonna shoot that email off to the ARPAS email address at CASA. Okay, next up is the CASA estimate letter. All right, so once they receive your email, they will send you an estimate letter. Now this is around $800 and it's basically formalizing the process for them to review your application in greater detail. So you need to pay for this first before they even look at the application. So it's worth double checking and making sure that everything in your application is correct. Now one thing to note is that CASA charges you for their time to review your application at the rate of $160 per hour. Now this is a very strange way of doing things, but what basically what happens is they take your money, they take the $800, then they work out how many hours they're gonna spend on your application, then they issue you a refund of the balance. So for this, we only end up paying around about $350. But this will vary once again, depending on the complexity of your job and how well your application was written. Obtaining an instrument. Four to six weeks later. Good morning, Aaron. Please find attached the instrument for your three nautical mile approval of Yemen. Kind regards. This is an email you get when your application basically gets approved. An instrument is basically a conditional approval from CASA. 
So for want of a better term, it's your approval document which outlines your operating conditions. It's an extremely important document, so read this carefully as you are only permitted to fly based on these conditions. So let me run through what ours says uh, on the front cover. It's got the date, so when we submitted this, which was the 7th of December 2018, Approval of areas of operating remotely piloted aircraft. Number one, the application. So this instrument applies to the operation of RPA, blah, 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 by UA visuals, aviation number, blah, 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 when used for aerial work. Number two, the approval. The operator may operate the RPA within three nautical miles of Essendon, Yemen, inside the area specified in Schedule 1. Then number three, the conditions. The approval is subject to the condition listed in Schedule 1. And then expiry. So when this expires, which is 14th of December 2020. Right, so then the next page is Schedule 1. So in our Schedule 1, it's, uh, basically there's about 16 conditions here. It goes for about two pages outlining the operation of the procedure. Uh, what we need to stick to before, during and after the flight. It covers things like the area of operation. You've got to fly within these coordinates. Can't fly above 164 feet, which is 50 meters above the ground. You have to submit a NOTAM 48 hours before, which I'll explain after this. You must call the ATC or the control tower. Um, you have to monitor specific frequency. There's various bits and bobs, but once again, this is super important and you have to stick to these conditions because if you don't and there's an incident, you will be liable and your insurance just won't cover you either. So very important to stick to what's in your schedule or in your instrument. Okay, issuing a NOTAM. This is a big one. Let's talk about the NOTAM. So a NOTAM is a notice to airmen. A notice to airmen, basically the definition is, it's a notice containing information concerning the establishment, condition, or change in any aeronautical facility, service, procedure, or hazard. <laughs> the timely knowledge of which is essential to personnel concerned with flight operations. Basically, it's a note that goes out and it's received by pilots in the air and the tower and whoever else needs to know and it's to inform them basically what's happening in that airspace and at what time and an exact location as well just so everyone knows and everybody keeps safe. Now, this is another huge process. It takes time, so make sure you count for this. And the process has also changed so slightly. So, you used to be able to submit a NOTAM yourself through Air Services Australia but there were way too many mistakes so now you have to submit it to CASA and then CASA will submit the NOTAM and do it on your behalf. They also have a new NOTAM document to fill out. Once again, can get a little confusing so let's start from the top. First, select AD, Aerodrome. Add in the airport code, Yemen, Y-M-E-N. Select NOTAM N for new. Then time convention, they prefer Zulu or UTC time, so you'll need to do the calculations. For us in Melbourne right now, we are 10 plus hours ahead of Zulu. So for this example, we want to shoot on the 31st of August 2020 between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. local. So the best way to work this out is to open a Zulu calculator. You can Google this. Uh, enter in your local time, hit calculate, and it will give you the Zulu time. So take note, as this says 2300, 11 p.m. the day before. So you will need to enter in 2300 on the date before your operation in the NOTAM. So in this case, it'll be 2020, August, and the 30th. So to double check this, if you add 10 hours from 11 p.m. on the 30th, you should get 9 a.m. on the 31st local time. Make sense? Math. Next, you need to select the confirmed box as this is the confirmed time slot. Then in item E, you'll need to add the correct instructions. For our operation, it is as follows. It can get a little confusing, so I'll decode it for you. UA unmanned multicopter, two kilos operating within blah, blah, blah of position, blah, 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 which is the coordinates, bearing blah, 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 magnetic north, nautical miles from Essendon, AD, Aerodrome, ARP, Aerodrome Reference Point, Yemen. We'll monitor Yemen Tower 125.1. decimal Then operator contact telephone number, blah, blah, blah. So that's decoded for you. Now that is the NOTAM message, which will go out. Okay, then item G, you'll need to add the height of your operation. So for us, we're not flying above 50 meters. We need to be under those power lines. So we put in here 164 feet and then 
the contact down the bottom of who's submitting the NOTAM. So in which case, this is our CASA contact. And then that's it. You basically chuck it all together in an email and shoot it off to the RPAS email. Then you just need to wait for the confirmation. Once confirmed, this NOTAM will be issued and you'll be able to see this NOTAM and other NOTAMs on the NAPES section of the Air Services site. To get this access, you need to create a login, which I believe it's still free. Um, and once you log in, you'll be able to see all the NOTAMs in the area. Wow, yes, all right, it's a big process. I hope you guys learned something today. If you're looking at flying drones for a living, make sure you check out dronemasterclassacademy.com, our online drone courses where you will learn the skills needed to fly professionally to get into the industry. You'll learn from established drone businesses across all disciplines, such as photography, cinematography, real estate, inspections, surveying, and much, much more, all online and video-based at your fingertips. Description below. I'll see you guys in the next one.